Hi, in this tutorial video we are going to look at the new MOSFET level 2 model that was included in PSIM version 10. To start with we're going to browse to where the model is in the library. Uh, just go to power, switches, and then browse down to the MOSFET 3 state uh, and place it down. Uh, the MOSFET 3 state switch has been in PSIM for a little while now. Uh, the level 2 is just slim simply going from level 1 to level 2 and this is now the new model that has been uh, released. Uh, it's got all these new uh, parameters associated with it. The tricky part obviously is figuring what those parameters should be and to, to help us through that I've uh, already set up this Cree device here and we'll look at how uh, I came to these parameters by looking at the data sheet. So this uh, is for a silk carbide device from Cree, the, the C2M MOSFET. So we'll just look now at the parameters from the device that I'm using and we'll look at the parameters from the data sheet and then we'll look at things like switching uh, speed and switching energy. Okay, so uh, the first thing here is 1200 volts. That's the breakdown voltage and that's exactly what we have listed here. The next parameter uh, that we need is the on resistance. 500 milliohms is what I've put down. Uh, if we look at the uh, drain source on state resistance. Uh, there is a whole host of ranges we could go between, between 280 milliohms to 530 milliohms, and it's all dependent on junction temperature, VGS, etc. Let's look at these figures four, five, and six to have a better understanding of what is going on. Uh, so, four, five, and six. So, if we look here, there's various VGS curves for, for it, and there's various on resistances associated with VGSs and junction temperatures. So I'm looking at 150 degrees Celsius, and I'm also looking at 6 amps flowing through it. So IDS 6 amps, that's fine by me. And I've got VGS set up at, uh, at 20 volts. So we're going to look at this bottom curve here, and around 150, so 500 milliohms looks like a pretty safe, safe, um, safe value for me to put in. So if we look here, 500 milliohms versus 500 milliohms over here, that looks like a pretty safe value. We can obviously tune this around. It's important to note that our model is none of these values are variables they are they run fixed for that particular simulation so if you want to run a simulation at a particular uh, a gate drive or a particular junction temperature you need to put these values in for that specific uh, those specific characteristics okay so uh, the next thing here is the great gate threshold voltage we have 2.1 volts uh, if we look here again we see VDS, uh, so we have a junction temperature 150, 2.1 volts seems pretty good to me. Um, coming down to the internal gate resistance, 11.4 volts, uh, sorry, 11.4 ohms. If we come over here and we see internal gate resistance, 11.4 is right there. Transconductance, 2.4, transconductance, 2.4. Uh, capacitances, okay, so the capacitances, these are the most variable parts of the device really so um, and it's important to note in the data sheet here they list input output and reverse transfer capacitance so I have uh, an, a capacitance here CGS of 258 pico ohms and that is related to the input capacitance um, by subtracting the reverse transfer capacitance so it, if we wanted to go off the data sheet values I would have a 256 put in here which would be 259 minus 3 uh, output capacitance COSS is is compared to the uh, CDS. I have 10.98 pico in. I'll get to how I got to that in a second. But if I wanted to go off data sheet values, it'd be COSS minus CRSS to give us 20 pico, and then uh, CGD is equivalent to CRSS reverse transfer. Now, if we look at the figures here for the operating conditions at the bottom, uh, we can see. These are the operating conditions. Let's zoom in a little bit and see what's going on. So we can see here, up at 800 volts, CRSS is two and a bit. So two is probably okay. Um, COSS is 20. So that's uh, you know maybe what's going on here. But I've, I, I'll show you where I got these values from in a second. But we see here that CISS is, pr is pretty constant. However, if we were operating in the 200 volt range or the 400 volt range, we'd have to select these values with a little bit more 
uh, we'd have to look more at what was going on. Now, where I actually got these values is Cree very helpfully releases an LT Spice model for their devices. So I just pulled the values in from their from their LT Spice model listing. So CGS, CDS, just pulled them directly in. Okay, so that was pretty straightforward. Um, Dodd, forward voltage, 3.3 volts and, and resistance here, 140. So if you look at their bo body diode from the Spice listing, you'll see that's where those came in as well. But also you can grab them from the uh, reverse diode characteristics right here. Okay, so that's where all those values came from. Now let's see how this model works um, and compare them versus the uh, the data sheet. And we can also compare it versus the, the SPICE listing because I've run an LT SPICE model on these things as well and we can compare everything together. Okay, so here are the switching results. Let's uh, zoom in here at the on transition. Let's just zoom in again. So here's our, our on transition. Uh, let's just do some measuring here. So uh, the turn on delay is this value before the thing, the current starts to flow. So turn on delay, we're getting about 2.1 nanoseconds. And if we look at the uh, parameter sh sheet here, so this is for resistive turn on and turn off, uh, uh, turn on delay time, 5.2 nanoseconds. So uh, same various, same ballpark of what's going on. Uh, if we look at the rise time, four nanoseconds versus 7.6. Again, very close to what was going on. Okay, I've pulled over the uh, LT Spice uh, simulation that I ran, and we can look at, at what they have on their model. So here we go for the uh, on delay. We have uh, three nanoseconds there. Uh, again, very comparable to what we had. And if we look at the uh, on rise time, they have seven nanoseconds, which I think is actually very comparable to the uh, data sheets of 7.6 nanoseconds for the rise time. Uh, next, we should compare the uh, current flowing um, into the gate uh, resistor. So this is uh, that waveform right here. So we can see that it peaks up at around one amp, which on our model, we got one amp there, and then it uh, dives down here to about uh, 370 uh, milliamps, which on our model, whoops, we've got about um, IRG at the bottom, at the lowest point there, we've got 3 point, 390 milliamps. And then if we look at the, the next peak here, we've got uh, about 600 uh, milliamps. And if we look at ours here, we've got uh, 580 milliamps there. So very comparable. If we look at the, the timing of these things, again, also pretty comparable as well to what's going on here. So there's uh, to the first peak, it's 10 nanoseconds. And then to the second peak, 15 nanoseconds, whereas ours is uh, to there is six nanoseconds. And to the next peak is 8.8 8 .8 nanoseconds. So again, very comparable looking waveforms on the on transition. Uh, and also the numbers are comparable to the uh, listed uh, values in the data sheet. Okay, so let's look at the off transition. Let's zoom in here. Okay, so on the off side of things, we've got, uh, if we measure up again, so off transition or off delay, uh, 7.5 nanoseconds, 7.5. Turn off delay time, 10.8 nanoseconds. So that's pretty good, pretty close. If we look at the uh, delay time, uh, we're looking at 9.5 nanoseconds and the fall time is 9.9 .9 nanoseconds. So fall time, very comparable between the two of them. Um, and then if we look at the uh, spice uh, listing uh, and we just zoom in on the off transition there. So again, we've got very comparable waveforms uh, on the gate uh, uh, current. So if we look at the off transition, so the time off there is 7.5 nano, very comparable to what we had and to what uh, the data sheet is here of the off the off delay time. And if we go back again and look at the fall time, 10 nanoseconds, very close to the off delay time there as well. So very comparable uh, our waveforms versus the spice, and both are very comparable to the data sheet as well. 
Um, now the next thing to look at is the uh, turn on switching energy and turn off switching energy. Very important parameters. Um, so that's what this circuit is down here. And I've already ran it and we can look at what's going on uh, with those parameters. So the switching energy uh, is defined uh, as the uh, voltage. Uh, so the switching loss is, is defined as the voltage uh, times the current and then the integral underneath it. So that's what we have here. So in the PSIM simulation, the switching energy to turn on, I've got um, three, 35 microjoules. So that's what we, and we have 32 microjoules in the data sheet. And then the switching, the turn off, we are a little bit low on the turn off. We've got, um, so this is the integral down here. So we've got 15 microjoules and the 37 microjoules listed here. So fortunately the off transition is not quite right. And this is more, most likely to do with the uh, voltage dependent capacitances, which we do not model in, in our, in our, um, in our model, uh, but if we look at what the LT spy simulation does, um, I actually can't get the LT spy simulation to work. Um, in this case, I've got a, a the model from um, the model from Cree for their spice model for the diode and for the FET, and I've got the equivalent again for for us on the diode side. And if I uh, actually turn the voltage on for this one, and if I run this simulation we can start to see what happens. Um, you can see that it's taking, um, if we see 3.9 femtoseconds per second to get anywhere. So we'll be waiting for a very long time for the simulation to actually go anywhere. Whereas if I run this simulation, you can see that we start getting results sort of right away. So it took us five seconds to go and now we're just calculating everything up and we actually get results. So, <clears throat> Uh, that's the comparison of our level two MOSFET model versus the uh, diode uh, versus the MOSFET models listed from SPICE and the running of those models from SPICE and the comparison versus the data sheets. Um, if you have any other questions, please let us know. I will be doing a tutorial video on the level two MOSFET model on the level two diode model story as well. So please check back again often for more videos. Thank you so much.